Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche. Welcome to the 200th episode of these environmental education posts that I do. Uh, for this week and for next week, I thought it'd be, I'd continue on my landscape project theme and um, do a couple posts about spring uh, yard and garden cleanup. Uh, we want to basically wait and uh, do some of that cleanup um, a little later in the spring, uh, thinking of protecting our uh, pollinator species and beneficial insects and other wildlife. So um, I'm going to discuss a couple of things that we can do to provide natural habitat features. Um, so this is something you can readily incorporate into your landscape. And a couple of these ideas are featured in the Xerces Society's Bring Back uh, the Pollinators Conservation Campaign. So for those of you who don't know Xerces Society, they are an international nonprofit focused on the conservation of invertebrates and their habitat. Um, and traditional landscape practices and the timing of those uh, would have you outside now cleaning up your yards during these random warm spells we've had at the end of winter and early spring. Unfortunately, these practices don't leave enough natural resources to support our, be our beneficial insects, our pollinators, and other wildlife. So this week, I want to talk to you about leaving your leaves a little longer, and uh, next week about saving your stems. So why should you leave your leaves? Um, many tiny animals live and overwinter in the leaf litter and the leaves will feed them and protect them. So I'm talking about things like lace bugs and snails, worms, beetles, millipedes, mites, uh, spiders, and many other invertebrates. Um, and in turn, these small creatures support small mammals like chipmunks and mice, our turtles, our birds, and, and amphibians that prey on the invertebrates. The majority of our butterfly and moth species use the leaf litter for winter protection of their eggs, their caterpillars, their chrysalises, um, cocoons, or sometimes overwintering adult insects. The leaf litter helps insulate them um, and both protects from freezing temperatures, late spring frosts, harsh winds, um, but it also covers them up and hides them from predators. If you move or tromp around in your leaf litter too early, you are risking crushing these pollinators unknowingly. So think about how hard is it um, for you to find a swallowtail chrysalis that looks very much like a rolled up dried leaf or the cocoons of luna moths that are actually physically wrapped up in leaves. Um, some species like hair streak butterflies lay their eggs on oak leaves that have fallen and um, those leaves serve as the first food that the caterpillars will um, eat the, the following spring. So disturbing the leaf litter, piling the leaves deep into a compost pile or bagging them up, um, that's going to deprive these creatures of oxygen and moisture and they're going to die. So um, also some overwintering bumblebee queens depend on leaf litter to protect them. They burrow down into the soil a few inches, um, but that leaf litter helps them, helps insulate them from um, the harsh uh, elements of winter. So if you remove it too soon, that bumblebee queen um, could die, and that's one less whole entire bumblebee population that doesn't get formed the following growing season. Um, leaf litter also helps our plants to survive. So by leaving them, um, the leaves insulate the root system, especially in the upper um, inches of the soil. Uh, against late spring frost, it helps retain moisture, and it limits the growth of annual weeds. Um, so it's a great and free alternative to your standard mulch. 
So how to go about leaving your leaves? Um, if you can, leave them permanently. So leave them in place. You don't have to rake them up at all. Um, and you can do that by uh, replacing and reducing the amount of turf or lawn grass that you have in your landscape. So decrease that lawn footprint and create um, nice native uh, flower beds. You can do a prairie meadow that can absorb some leaves, um, a woodland garden or a rain garden and use the, the leaves from the trees in your landscape as a natural mulch. Um, you can also use a thick uh, layer of leaves to help smother long grasses and create new um, native planting areas in successive years. You can leave a thin layer of leaves out um, in your lawn grasses. That thin layer um, won't smother the lawn grasses, but it'll provide uh, the benefits of added organic matter and nutrients as the leaves decompose. Um, if you live in an area where you're not allowed to leave your, your leaves at all, one, try to see if you can educate the people who are responsible for those rules. But um, it's best to use a, a rake or a leaf blower or vacuum. I'm fond of these handheld little leaf rakes for moving small amounts, um, being picky around plants and other things like that. These are pretty, pretty handy tools to use. That's better um, because you are capturing and relocating the leaves whole um, rather than like shredding them up with a mower. And that's uh, a better chance of saving eggs, cocoons, chrysalises, and the invertebrates pr uh, present in that leaf litter. And you can move them into your flower beds. Um, this section right here is a new native uh, planting. So we took some of the leaves off of our lawn grass and placed them to use as mulch to help insulate this new native planting bed we added on the end of last summer. Um, you have a, um, you can also put them around ornamental trees, shrubs, and perennial plantings as mulch in a more um, structured or formal landscape. I wanted to mention timing of doing this. It's, it's critical to time it correctly. You want to wait until late spring, giving the butterflies, the moths, the queen bumblebees, I mean, other overwintering animals a chance to emerge successfully in the spring before you start um, altering the, the leaf litter. So uh, in early spring, that protects from late uh, season frost and chilly nights, despite the warm daytime temperatures, and also helps protect um, from eroding really heavy spring rains. So um, when you clean up your yard does depend on where you live in the country. Uh, but here's some ideas. These are from a blog that Xerces Society put out about uh, spring yard cleanup. So ask yourself the question, um, have you put away your snow shovel, your snow boots, your, your winter attire? If you haven't done that yet, it's too early to start your spring lawn cleanup. Um, is, uh, is it time to plant tomatoes outdoors? So a lot of um, vegetable gardeners know you don't want to start doing that until uh, nighttime temps are uh, pretty steadily in uh, the 50 degree Fahrenheit range. You could also think about, are the lawn grasses starting to grow tall and need regular mowing? Again, that, that goes to those 50 degree temperatures pretty consistently. Um, has the tax deadline uh, passed already? In northern states, we really want the earliest cleanup to occur um, mid to late April. And um, some bees, like sweat bees, don't emerge until into May. So think about um, that. You could also ask yourself, have the apples and pear trees finished blooming? 
Um, these fruit trees again bloom mid-April through mid-May depending on where you are in the country and so you want to wait until then um, so that pollinators um, that those that emerge later have a chance to do so and you should be all set. So I wanted to make a special note. You don't want to use um, apricots, peaches, plums, or cherry trees as your guide um, because those tend to bloom earlier just as the very first like early ground nesting bees start to emerge. So you want to wait, wait for the apples and pears to be done before you attempt your garden cleanup. I hope uh, that advice uh, helps you to provide more natural habitat for our wildlife this spring. Take care and have a good week.